In this module, we look at two new statistical techniques. The first, analysis of variance, or ANOVA, and the second, regression. Analysis of variance is used to compare the means of two or more populations. So suppose, for example, that we were interested in determining whether four different discount chains charged the same price for items. What we might do is go into each of those four chains, that would be four different populations, collect sample data, determine the average selling price, compare those average selling prices, and based on that, make a decision as to whether or not we believed that the average selling price in the four different chains was the same or not. The appropriate tool for that would be analysis of variance. We use regression to predict the value of one variable, called the dependent variable, based on given values of one or more other variables, called the independent variables. An example of that might be if we're interested in determining what the demand for certain building products might be during a certain time of year, given current interest rates, and knowing the population growth of the particular location. So the time of year, interest rates, and population growth would be the independent variables, and the demand for the building materials would be the dependent variable. And given different values for the independent variables, we could predict the demand for the building materials at any given time of year, any given interest rate, or population growth. It needs to be noted here that Regression assumes a linear relationship, so what we're really looking for there is the equation of the best fit straight line for that data. Okay, uh, we're first going to look at a distribution called the F distribution. In the past, we've talked about the normal distribution and the T distribution. This is just another probability distribution that we will use to do hypothesis testing. Then we're going to look at single factor ANOVA, two factor ANOVA, correlation, and then we'll get into simple and multiple regression. So we're going to look at two specific uses for the F distribution. Uh, the first is to test whether or not we believe that the variances of two populations are equal. The second application is used in analysis of variance to compare the means of several different populations. Let's take a look at the F distribution. You can see the graph on the right. Um, note that the F distribution is always positive, is skewed to the right, gets close to the x-axis but doesn't really touch it, and it has two different parameters, the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the degrees of freedom for the denominator. I'll get into that just a little bit more later and you'll see why those parameters are as they are. So here's a couple of uh, situations where we might be interested in comparing population variances. In the first case, we have two different shearing machines that cut bars to the same length. Now, in this case, we're not interested in testing whether or not the lengths are the same. What we want to know is, is the variation in the lengths of the cuts about the same? Or another way of saying that is, are the two machines cutting consistently the same? In the second example, we look at two different types of common stock, and we're looking at the rate of return. Again, we're not looking at the rate of return itself, but we're looking at the variation in the rate of return. In other words, are the two stocks equally predictable? Do they have the same consistency? Is the variation the same in the two different rates of return? So, if you want to test for equal variances, this is the null and alternate hypothesis we would use. Uh, note this is a two-sided test. Now, you could have a one-sided test, for example, if you were interested in knowing whether one population had a higher or lower uh, variance than the other population. The test statistic used for this 
hypothesis test is the F test statistic and it's determined by taking the sample variance of the first sample and the variance of the second sample and dividing them. And that's why the F distribution has a numerator degree of freedom and a denominator degree of freedom as the two parameters of interest. The degrees of freedom of the numerator and denominator are based on the sample size of each of the two samples. So um, let's take a look at, at an example here. We have a limo service that offers uh, transportation from Toledo, Ohio to the airport in Detroit. The president of the company is considering two different routes. One is US-25 and the other is I-75. Now what he wants to know here is not is the travel time the same, but is the variation in the travel times the same? In other words, are the two travel times equally predictable? Do they have the same variation in travel time? So we see the data on the right and using a 10% level of significance, we want to know whether there's any difference in the variation in the travel times of the two different routes. So here we go. Here's the um, hypothesis test. Note that we uh, have our F statistic. The level of significance is 0 0.10. The rejection criteria is given here and it's based on the F distribution and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. And then we want to make our decision. So what we would do is we would go to data analysis and we would select under data analysis the F test to sample for variances. This is what the output looks like when you do that based on the data that we had in the example. Uh, note that the F statistic is 4.23. The degrees of freedom are given based on the sample sizes. Uh, unfortunately, this test only gives us the p-value and the f-value, the critical f-value, for a one-tailed test. I don't understand for sure why they do that, but we're going to have to deal with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over to Excel and take a look at this problem. So here we have the same data that we just looked at a few minutes ago, and I'm now on an Excel workbook. We have our hypothesis. Our level of significance we said was 0 0.10. And we're going to use the F test statistic. So I'm going to go to data, data analysis. And as we saw in the example, I'm going to select the F test to sample for variances. Select OK. It asked me for the first variable range, and I'm going to use uh, Route 25 for the first variable. doesn't make any difference which one you call the first or which one you call the second. You'll get the same results. And I'll use Interstate 75 as the second. I am going to check the box for labels because I did include the labels in the data. The level of significance is 0 0.10. And I'm going to have to select a place to put my output. Now notice when I select, when I hit the button for output, the cursor moves up to input. I don't know why that happens, but it does. So we have to manually move the cursor back down here before we actually select our, our output range. Um, I'm going to move over here. And then I'm going to hit OK. And we have the output. I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And our F value, as you can see, is equal to 4.226. The uh, P value is the easiest thing to use given this test. The P value is simply equal to uh, 2 times the p-value for the one-sided test. So that's the easiest uh, calculation to make. Uh, the p-value for the two-sided test is just twice the p-value for the one-sided test. 
Now we could stop right there because we have all the information we need to reach this conclusion. Our p-value is 0 0.081, our level of significance is 0 0.1, and since the p-value is smaller than the level of significance, remember the level of significance is the risk we're willing to take of incorrectly rejecting, and the p-value is the actual probability of incorrectly rejecting. So we have enough information now to reach our conclusion, and the conclusion would be that since the p-value is smaller than alpha, we would conclude that the uh, variances are not equal. Now, in the event that you do want to know how to find the critical f-values, Remember that when you're looking to find probability and you're given the value for the test statistic, you use the distribution function. When you know the probability and, and you're looking for the value of the test statistic, you use the inverse function. So in this case, we know the probability, the level of significance is 0.1. It's a two-sided test, so we want to have 0 0.05 in the right tail, 0 0.05 in the left tail. So... I'm going to go to formulas, more functions, statistical, and I'm going to scroll down to the F distribution, and I'm looking for the inverse function. So notice that I have an inverse function, right tail, and then just an inverse function. Now the inverse function gives me the left tail, the inverse right tail obviously gives me the right tail. So to find the right tail, I will click on the F.inverse.righttail and the probability would be 0 0.05. The degrees of freedom for the numerator is, the numerator would be the first uh, sample that you selected, so that would be 6. The degrees of freedom for the denominator would be 7. And our critical region is 3. Point, anything greater than 3.866. The lower critical region could be determined by using the F inverse to get the left tail. And again, we have 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom 6 and 7. And I hit OK. And I get the lower critical region of 0.2377. So as you can see, our F statistic 4.226 is greater than 3.866. It's in the critical region. So regardless of whether we compared the p-value with alpha or the F statistic with the critical region, in both cases we reached the same conclusion that the variances are not equal. Note that I've asked that you write your conclusion in English, not math speak. What I mean by that is don't write your conclusion as we reject the null hypothesis. Write your conclusion as we believe the variances are not equal. That's English. That's not math speak. Okay, now we're going to look at comparing the means of two or more populations. In that case, the null hypothesis is that the population means are all the same for all the populations. The alternate hypothesis is that at least one of the means is different. The test statistic is the F distribution, and it's computed from the sample data. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. The decision rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the computed test statistic is greater than the critical F. This will always be a one-sided test always be a one-sided test. So uh, here's what the hypothesis looks like. Uh, we have the null hypothesis that uh, the means of each of the populations are equal. The alternate is that at least one is not equal. And the, the uh, rejection rule is reject if F, the computed test statistic, is greater than the critical region. And that, again, is a one-sided test. So let's look at, at an example here where we compare the means of two or more populations. 
In this case, we actually have four populations. We're looking at four different airlines. And what we've done is a satisfaction survey based on 25 questions. And each question can be uh, rated from four down to one, four being good, one being bad. So you can see that uh, if you got a four on all 25 questions, your rating would be 100. And it could go anywhere from 100 down to 25. So what we want to know is, is there any difference in the satisfaction rating based on the customer survey uh, between these four different airlines? And we're going to use a level of significance of 0 0.01. So um, here we have the null hypothesis that says the average customer satisfaction of the four airlines is the same. And the alternate says at least one is different. They're not all the same. The level of significance is 0 0.01. And I'm going to show you in just a minute how to calculate how we get the F st uh, statistic. And actually, uh, Excel is going to do all of this for us. So here we have the data. And we have... Um, we notice that we're using a single factor analysis of variance. Now we're using a single factor because we only have one factor and that factor is the satisfaction rating. Even though we have four airlines, even though we have four airlines, the, there's only one factor we're looking at and that's customer satisfaction. So uh, we're going to go to data analysis, uh, choose analysis of variance single factor, and this is what the output looks like. So this F value here, the 8.99, is the computed F statistic based on the sample data. The critical value is 5.09, and the P value is 0 0.0007, very small P value. So our conclusion in that case would be to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that at least one of the airlines has a different satisfaction rating than the others. doesn't say whether it's higher or lower, just, just that they're not all the same. All right, I'm going to move over to Excel now and just show you how we do this calculation. So here we have the data that we just looked at. Uh, I've, I've got it now on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, we're testing the hypothesis that the means are all the same, the alternates, at least one is different. The level of significance is 0 0.01, and we're going to let Excel do all the work for us. So I'm going to go to Data, Data Analysis, and I'm going to select Analysis of Variance Single Factor, because we only have one factor here. OK. The first thing it asks is for the input range, and I'm going to include all the data. Don't worry about the blanks. Uh, Excel will ignore the blanks, so there's no problem there. I will select the box that says labels in the first row. My level of significance, however, is not 0.05, it's 0.01. And then I must select an a output range, and note again that the cursor jumps up to the input values. So we have to manually move it down and select our output range. And here we have the output data. Now, the, the uh, top part of this is just the summary data that gives us a averages and variances and so on. What we're really interested in is this ANOVA table down at the bottom. Let me make that so I can read it. And... The F statistic then is equal to this value here. The critical region is equal to, we've got to move over here to find that, 5.09. And the P value, the P value is equal to this small number here, the 0 0.000743. So regardless of whether we elect to, to use the uh, p-value compared to the level of significance or the computed F statistic as compared to the critical region, in either case, since the p-value is smaller than the level of significance 
or the F statistic is in the critical region, our conclusion would be that the uh, satisfaction level is not equal for all four airlines. And that was a single factor analysis of variance. Now we're going to look at a two-way analysis of variance or a two-factor analysis of variance. In this particular case, we have a transit authority that's looking to add a new route to its service. So uh, it wants to, to expand so it includes a route from Starbrick into the central district of Warren. And it's considering four different routes, uh, the first one US-6, the second West End, the third the Hickory Street Bridge, and the fourth Route 59. And it wants to select the best of those four routes. So in order to determine which of, which of those routes is best, it's going to collect some data. It's going to do some, uh, assign some drivers, and it's going to travel those four routes and see which one's best. Because the drivers can affect the travel time, we're going to have each driver drive each route. So we'll know how driver one drives each of the four routes, how driver two drives each of the four routes, how driver three drives each of the four routes. By doing this, we eliminate the effect of the driver. Some drivers may be slower than others. So we really want to know, is there any difference in the travel time uh, between the four routes? And we don't want the driver to, uh, the difference in driver to affect that. So we have the data here. This is a two-factor. Now, this is a two-factor because we have two factors. The first factor is route. The second factor is drivers. So again, I want to reiterate, what we did here was we said, in order to eliminate the effect of drivers on the travel time, we're going to have each driver travel each route, and we'll collect the data that way. Okay, now we're still comparing the means of two or more populations. Um, the hypothesis is the same. Nothing new here. Nothing new here until we get to how we analyze the data. In this case, we're using a two-factor analysis of variance without replication. Notice it's without replication. The only way you would use with replication would be if each of the drivers drove those routes multiple times and you had multiple times in each of these cells. So this is a two-factor without replication. Notice that the rows represent the drivers and the columns represent the routes. So down here, the rows are the drivers, the columns are the routes. And we, we do the test the same way we did in the single factor analysis of variance. In this case, the uh, computed F statistic is 7.9 as compared to the critical value. The P value is small, so our conclusion would be that the travel time of the routes is not the same, and we have eliminated the effect of drivers from that by doing the two-factor analysis of variance. In the event that you were interested in knowing whether there's any difference in the drivers, uh, you can see that, in fact, there is a difference. This uh, computed F is bigger than the critical F, and the p-value is very small, so it's a good thing for us that we did decide to, to do this uh, a two-factor analysis of variance because it's clear here that the effect of drivers would have made a difference. Uh, just as a reference point for you, this two-factor analysis of variance is likened to the paired t-test that we had back when we were looking at hypothesis testing on the means of two populations. When we paired the data, if you remember we did the insurance example, and we paired the data on families. 
So this is a two-factor analysis of variance. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over and actually do this in Excel so you can see how it's done. Okay, so here we have the data in Excel. We have the two factors, the route and the drivers. We've got our um, hypothesis here. We have our level of significance. And the level of significance is 0.05. And we're going to let Excel do the rest of the work for us. So we're going to go to data, data analysis. We're going to select two factor without replication. We're going to select the input value. Notice I included the labels. So I need to click the label output range and you already know what happens there so we have to move the cursor down and let's put our output here we get the summary data again but we also have the data that we looked at just a minute ago so our f statistic is equal to this value if we're testing for the for the different routes and in fact um, uh, uh, let's do that remember the rows were drivers and the columns were the different routes so I'm going to type routes in there and I'm going to type drivers in here just so I don't get confused the critical value is equal to the 3.49 and the p-value is the 0 0.003 so our conclusion in English oh I didn't put in my critical F did I equal the critical F so the test statistic is in the critical region and of course the p-value is smaller than level significance so our we want to reject the null hypothesis, but in English that means that the travel times for all four routes are not the same. Now we can go down here and do the hypothesis test on drivers if you'd like. Um, doesn't take much time to do that. 0.05. The F statistic is now the 9.78. The critical region, oops, let's skip down too far there. The critical region is equal to the 3.25. The P value <clears throat> is equal to the 0 0.0009. And again, our conclusion is the uh, drive time, drive time of the four drivers, or five drivers, how many ever drivers? Are, the drive time of the drivers is not the same. So that was a two-factor analysis of variance. And, and let me repeat one more time, it's very much like the paired t-test that we had back when we were looking at hypothesis testing comparing the means of two populations.